Hello everyone, my name is Alex Schaefer and I am a senior sales engineer here at Fivetran. In this video, I will be showing you how to set up a Salesforce connector. When you log into the Fivetran UI, you will be on the connector screen, as you can see here. To add a new connector, you can click Add Connector in the upper right-hand corner. The first step is to select a destination. The destination you select is the location to where Fivetran will sync the data. I will go ahead and select the Snowflake Demo 01 and then hit Continue Setup. The next step is to select the connector. One thing I want to call out is that Fivetran has a Salesforce connector and a Salesforce Sandbox connector. It is important to know if you are connecting to a Sandbox instance, you will need to use the Salesforce Sandbox connector. This is because Salesforce provides different API endpoints for Sandbox instances. From a Fivetran perspective, the prerequisites in the setup flow are still the same. So for the sake of this demo, I will be setting up a Sandbox connector. I select the connector and hit continue setup. This brings me to the setup form and the setup guide. You will need to tell Fivetran the name of the schema you wanted to create in the destination. Fivetran will create tables in the schema with data from the objects that you choose to replicate. I'll go ahead and call this Salesforce Sandbox Demo. And this is the name of the schema that will be created. Once you've entered the destination schema name, you can hit Authorize, and it will redirect you to your login screen for Salesforce, or it will default to OAuth if you have OAuth enabled. This brings me to a login page. I will actually go ahead and log in through Okta. Once I'm logged in, I can hit Refresh, and you can see that I can now select my user for the Sandbox instance. Once you've selected your user, you can see that the authentication has succeeded and we can hit save and test. Now, before I do so, I do wanna call out a couple of things. For the prerequisites, all we really need is an active Salesforce account and we need a Salesforce enterprise level account or at least some API calls that we can use for extracting data. Now, most of the time when users set up a connector, the users have enough access to the objects, the connector should be able to complete its setup. Um, I do want to call it that we also have some set of instructions that are very um, optional, such as enabling field history tracking. This isn't required, but it is an option that you can enable on the Salesforce side to keep track of the history of specific fields on various objects. You can learn more about a link to their documentation. You might encounter an error during one of your syncs, such as an invalid session ID. This is typically due to locking being enabled on a specific session IP. So if you do run into this issue, we do provide steps for how to disable the session IP locking. There might be scenarios where you want to create a new user that's specific for Fivetran. We can call this like the Fivetran user. We do have some steps that we outline for creating a new user. In doing so, you can also reduce the level of permissions that they have. Again, we only need read-only access to the objects that you want to replicate. So you can either limit the permissions of the user inside of Salesforce, or within our UI, you can actually deselect tables that we will replicate. And I will show you that in a second. Last option I'll call out really quickly is that we do also have the ability to connect via AWS private link. Again, if you're organization requires a secure connection to Fivetran using something like private link, this option is available as well. With that, we'll go ahead and hit save and test. Now, when you hit save and test, what we'll do is we'll run through a series of tests to make sure that we can actually replicate data from the sandbox or the Salesforce environment that you want us to pull data from. In terms of this test, we're just seeing if we can reach the Sandbox API given the credentials that were provided. Again, Fivetran will inherit the permissions of the credentials that you supply. So if I use a specific user, we just need to make sure that that user's credentials can access the API. If you're using a service account, same thing. We just need to make sure that they can reach the API. Once the test is passed, you can hit continue. The next step will be to select your schema. So right now we're using our credentials to see if we can fetch the schema of all the objects that you want to replicate. Once they populate, you can choose the specific objects. You can even choose the specific fields. And you can see here that I can actually select and deselect specific columns. On the right-hand side, you can notice that you are also able to hash data. So if you want data to be hashed while writing it in, you can do so as well. I'll go ahead and just select the account object and we'll hit save and continue. The next step is to tell Fivetran how you want us to replicate your data. 
Allow all means any new object or any new column that gets added to any of the objects that are currently being replicated, Fivetran can automatically start ingesting them. If you choose just allow columns, Fivetran will only include new columns for the objects that you've selected. And if you select block all, Fivetran will hard code your selections of your schema and only replicate them and you will have to manually add new columns and objects uh, once they're available. We'll go ahead and allow all and hit continue. And just like that, we have finished setting up our connector. The next step to do is to start the initial sync. And just like that, we have a pipeline up and running. Now, there are a couple things that you can do to manage this connector. The first thing you can do is you can go to the setup tab. You can tell us how quickly or how often you want us to sync the data. By default, it's set to every six hours. You can set this to every 15 minutes, or you can set it to once a day at every 24 hours and everything in between. Something else I'll also highlight is that if you want to update the schema at any moment in time, you can do so as well. Um, as you saw, I only selected the account object. Um, I can come in and select more objects if I would like. You also can change the behavior for how you want Fivetran to replicate your data as well. Something you'll also notice on the right-hand side is that we have a way in which we can track the changes. So if something gets deleted on the object, you can see right now it is set to soft delete. For those of you that are interested in something like capturing type two slowly changing dimensions, we do have history mode available. Uh, this will keep every version of every record that is captured by Salesforce. So the example I like to use is, let's just say an account goes from a prospect to a customer to churned. Fivetran can keep track of when those changes were made inside of Salesforce, and we can push in an individual record for each stage that that account was in. You also have some logs that we provide. Um, you will have access to these as well, but if you want to see how many records were modified for a given object, when the connector started syncing, when the sync finished, um, any of the API calls that were made, all of those will be included in the logs. Jumping back into the status screen, we can now see that the sync has completed. Since I'm only syncing one object, we see that it took one minute and 18 seconds, 40 seconds to extract the data, 14 seconds to process the data, 15 seconds to load the data.